So what I'm going to go ahead and do is show you one of the cool things that I saw while I was searching online. Now, before we start this video, I just wanted to say that they did not ask me to do this. I'm not getting paid to do this. All I wanted to do was to review a cool product that I saw online from a small group. If I haven't done it already, I'll go ahead and put their name and their link in the description. So if you guys are interested in seeing what I show you here today, then you can go ahead and check them out. But again, not asked to do it, so there's no like coupon code or anything. I'm just going to show you what I think about it and how I think it is. So right here I have the package. So I already cut it open and then all I have to do is go ahead and show you. So basically what this group does is that they make Oricas, or I wouldn't really say Oricas, but it's like anime style decks. So what they have is the goat control deck and look at that, that is amazing. Like, that's actually pretty beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through each card and show you how it looks, basically the glare of it, everything. Um, there's a little ding in the corner right here, I just noticed, but I think that's just from how I was holding it. I think that's on me. So, uh, just to show you, so we have uh, two copies of Air Knight Parsha. This is what you see in like every deck profile, most likely. It's either this or Jinzo, but that looks really nice. And uh, I really like the design of these because it does, again, remind you of the anime. So, and it's all hollow. I mean, this is only gonna cost you about $30 uh, plus shipping. Actually, I don't even think I paid shipping for this. So, it's very nice. I really like the look of these cards. And it has the anime style on the back as well. So, there's like a few scruff things, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Again, you're not going to use this for like a tournament or anything. This is just like a, hey, if you want to play it, play it. But uh, double Air Knight. And then we have an Azura Priest. This is what you don't really see in a lot of GOAT decks. This is always just like a random slot because um, everyone basically plays the same build for control. It all just depends on your side and extra deck. But it still looks nice, nevertheless. And then this one is Black Luster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning. This is beautiful. This one looks really clean. They do kind of have like a yellow look to it, but look at that. It, it again, it hits you home because it does look exactly like the anime. So I just think it just looks really good. But there's that. And then we have a Breaker of the Magical Warrior. I believe this is also one of my favorites. I mean, I, I only got the idea of what this looked like when I was looking at the description of what comes in the decks, but these are all looking really clean, to be honest. And everyone should know what these do if you do like GOAT format. Uh, DD Warrior Lady, again, not a lot of people played this in most builds, but I think they based it off of some guy that topped or won in GOAT format duels in the past. So... He was playing DD Warrior Lady in his list. Uh, we got two copies of Magical Merchant. Again, these are really clean. And then two copies of Magician of Faith. Also really good. Uh, one Morphing Jar. You don't really see a lot of people play Morphing Jar. You see people like kind of lean away from Morphing Jar. In my deck profile that you've seen in my channel for my GOAT control list, I do play the Morphing Jar just because I really like what it does in the grind game and it could help you steal games that you might not be winning. Uh, one Sangan, everyone plays Sangan in GOAT format, so can't really complain there. Uh, Sinister Serpent, again, same thing, this card is broken. And all of these just look so nice. Uh, Tribe Infecting Virus, this is a new card that went to three, has been banned for the longest time because of how broken it is, but it's really bad now. Uh, double Sukiyomi because this card is game changing in the format and it, it does so much for you in the long run. Uh, double Book of Moon. I don't believe a lot of people played three of it. Uh, Delinquent Duo because Trinity. Uh, Graceful Charity, same thing, Trinity. Uh, oh, not Potty Rude. Uh, we have Heavy Storm. So look at that. This looks exactly like the anime. <laughs> so that's very spot on. Uh, I believe, yeah. So we have three copies of Metamorphosis. So for those that don't want to pay for like champion pack supers because they're expensive as hell, you can always just go ahead and get these from my boy. But these are beautiful. Uh, Mystical Space Typhoon. 
this looks pretty clean. It's a little dark, so like the I don't really know if I like the image on this one so much, but just, that's just depending on the artwork because it's a little dark, but still cool nonetheless. Double number and a cross out. This card is crazy in GOAT. There it is. Okay, so Pot of Greed. What does it do, right? But, I mean, this card looks beautiful. This is really clean. When people always activated Pot of Greed in the anime, and they just held it up like, ooh, like, I activate this. Very clean looking. Uh, premature Burial. Standard. Uh, double scapegoat. I mean, a lot of people have played like three scapegoat in the past. I think it really just depends on your like play style, but I find it two to be like key in goat. So I'm glad that it included two scapegoats, not three. Uh, I don't know about the third metamorphosis. I think that could be like something else. But again, this all comes custom. Like you don't get to change any of the cards in it. It's all the same exact list every single time you get it. Uh, last spell is the Snatch Steel. This card is broken as well. I remember the time when it came to one during Necroz format and then got banned right again. Uh, for traps, you get the Call of the Haunted and then double tust, tust, Dust Tornado. Again, if you've seen my build, this is essentially like basically the same build as mine, just with like a few card differences. Like I play a Exile Force and only two Metamorphosis. Uh, or actually, maybe I am playing three. I forgot what I did, but oh, I think I took out the Exterior Priest for an Exiled Force, and I still think I play three Metamorphosis, but I don't know. Uh, Mirror Force, this card looks really good. Uh, again, some of the cards have a little bit of scruff wear, but I think that's just something that can be easily fixed. Uh, Ring of Destruction, beautiful trap card. I kind of wish it had the like anime, well, this is the anime style art, but I wish I had like the OCG art, that would be cool. Uh, double Sakuretsu armor because it was the most standard. Three was too much. Uh, Torrential Tribute because this card was at one. And uh, this card is honestly just insane in today's format too. But beautiful. And then that's actually going to do it for the main deck. You actually get a full 15 card side deck as well with this. Or not side deck, a 15 card extra deck. And we're going to go ahead and show that off here as well. So you get three copies of Thousand Eyes Restrict which I believe is really cool because in Go format, you didn't really have a limit on the extra deck, so you could play as many copies as you want, but the most generic thing to do was just play three copies of Thousand Eyes Restrict. Uh, one Ojama King. You don't really play any level sevens in your deck, so this was basically for like when you would uh, snatch steal one of your opponent's cards and then you would just metamorphosis into an Ojama King, and then you walk your opponent out of two zones that they have. It's really good because it makes it to where they can't scapegoat. So Ojama King was just really good back then. Uh, Dark Balter, I kind of wish this came with more than one, but it does only come with one. But I mean, you can't really complain because it still looks very nice. And then Gatling Dragon, because this card single-handedly would steal games. But the only way to really make Gatling Dragon would be when you would metamorphosis your Blackluster Soldier and, uh, or your D Dark Magician of Chaos. But actually, no, Dark Magician of Chaos, I think, was a 7. I, I forget what it was, but Gatling Dragon, still good nonetheless. Uh, Ryu Ascension, I believe I feel the same about this card as I do Balter. I kind of wish it came with two of this instead of one. But I like having the diversity too, and it still looks very clean. Uh, King Dragoon, can you imagine if we had Dark Dragoon in side go format? Can you, there's just no way of getting past it. But King Dragoon, I, I've never really played with it, so I can't really vouch for it. Uh, Dark Blade, the Dragon Knight, this card's really good too, but again, since you don't really play level 6s, and especially in this deck, you don't have any level 6s, this would just be like when you would snatch uh, Jinzo from your opponent, or like Zaborg, you would just link up, or not link, <laughs> you would metamorphosis into Dark Blade. Uh, Dark Fire Dragon, this was mainly just to get you um, a level 4 in the grave. And uh, it helps you too when you're playing Chaos because it gives you a dark, so you can keep going off from there. Uh, One Dragotis, this would be like when you need to get rid of your Sangan just to get a search. And then we play, or we, uh, they gave us a Reaper on the Nightmare as well. I actually don't own this in Real Goat. I really wish I did, but. The prices on it are just so confounded, so I just 
I don't know. But I do like that it was included in here. Uh, Flame Ghost, this is a little bit of a weird one. I mean, again, it's just for getting darks into the grave, and it's a way of getting rid of your Sangin. I don't really like that they did Flame Ghost and Dragotas because you never really make level 3s in the extra deck, but it does look cool nonetheless because it is an old school card. But that's just me. That's just how I feel. Like, this could have been like a second Balter or like a second Ryu Senshin. Uh, Fiend's Total Dragon, this card is crazy. Uh, this could have been like a second Fiend's Total Dragon as well, but it's still good. And the last card is the Last Warrior from another planet, because again, it's the same situation. You would use this when you would snatch one of your opponent's level 7s. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for the review, uh, at least of like the total look of the cards. I'll go ahead and sleeve these up and then I'll get a hand shuffle going and then see how it feels as compared to real cards. Okay guys, I'm back. So I wanted to go ahead and show you like, basically the deck is still in order from how I showed it off to you. So the only thing was that um, I just sleeved it. So everything is still in the same order. I wanted to go ahead and do like a few test hands and like shuffle with it just to show you how like the feel of it is. But for the most part, when you put these cards inside the sleeves, they actually fit really well. I mean, they're a bit snug on the little bit. Um, they're not like too snug to where you have to like shove it in there or anything. But it's at the point to where like when you would um, put it in, it's like, like, you know, like really close to the corners. But for the most part, you only need to get it in once. Uh, <laughs> but... For the most part, they look really good inside the sleeves. They, again, look just like the anime. The only thing I would probably recommend doing is that since they have, like, the anime style back, I would probably suggest getting, like, clear sleeves because that would look, like, so much better. But instead, I'm just using Ultra Pro Blacks just to show you how it looks like. But we're going to go ahead and do a few, like, shuffles. Oh, wow. That actually just feels the same as just shuffling regular cards. Uh, the thing that I like about these cards is that they're a bit more thick but I think that's just because these are probably like just um, foil rubbed against actual Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I'm not too sure how they make them exactly. Uh, again, like I said, this isn't like a sponsored video or anything. I just saw this product online and was like, I really want to try it because I love GOAT format and I love old school cards and I definitely love watching the anime. Whenever I do like my deck buildings and all that, I always have the Yu-Gi-Oh anime in the background while I do it because it just gets me in my feels and then I just get in the zone when I do it like this. So it just adds extra inspiration, but for the most part, this feels really good. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a power shuffle just to show you like what an opening hand looks like. But it feels really nice. It feels just like the regular Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, you can't really tell the difference unless you're actually looking at the card precisely. But it's really cool and I really like the design of these cards. I think they did a really great job. There are probably just some things that they could change. Like look on the back where it shows like that. But that's also just because that's... Where the bubble is but when you do it on regular ultra bowl cards you don't really see it too much like on this i think it just depends on the card but it could also just be on the sleeve i'm not too sure exactly on that but they feel really nice again can't really tell the difference unless you're looking at them and i think this will be a lot of fun especially like i don't think i highly doubt that you'd be allowed to take this to an actual goat format tournament so um, this is just for casual, fun play, and I really like the look of it. I really like the feel of it. We'll do one test hand. So, Burial, Tornado, Sack, Faith, Jar, and Breaker. Because you draw a six going first. So I think here you would probably just go ahead, set your Death Tornado, and pass. But, um, wow, these actually feel really nice. They're a little hard to power shuffle but for the most part, they do feel really good, and they just look clean, and it's all foil, so again, the deck is really cheap to do. It's only like $30, and it feels really nice, so if you like all foil cards and really got the urge to play GOAT format, either friends told you or like vendors or whoever it was that told you, like, hey, you should try GOAT format, this, I feel like, is the perfect way to do it because everyone should know what these old school cards do anyway. Maybe there's like a few cards like 
uh, King Dragoon, uh, Reaper of the Nightmare that you're not unsh not sure of, but those are all extra deck cards. Basically, when you play the extra deck in here, you're mainly making Thousand Eyes Restrict. But there's probably some cards in here like people don't know about. Like I would say, new players don't really know a whole lot about like Azure Priest or Tribe Infecting Virus or like a Metamorphosis. Like basically, all these cards that no one uses anymore. But I really like this. I really like how the cards feel. Uh, I would honestly consider getting stuff from them in the future if they do like different style decks. Like maybe if they did like character decks, I would be interested in doing this. But I really can't complain. I really like this product a lot and I love Go Format. So that's going to go ahead and do the review here. Again, I'm going to have their name and their information down in the description below. But honestly, I just go ahead and ch check them out because I think this is amazing. But yeah, guys, that's going to go ahead and do it.